Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Chris Lee of United Destiny Entertainment, singer, songwriter, producer, professional audio engineer. Uh, today, what I'm going to talk to you guys about is the importance of having uh, a great signal chain for great recordings or good recordings when you're trying to put out music. Now, I'm mindful that a lot of us aren't millionaires. We don't have the money to buy half a million dollar consoles or million dollar consoles or have buildings with recording studios and all that kind of stuff. Um, so with that being said, uh, there is a way to get great sounds, uh, great recordings, uh, to put out professional music, you know, if you're on budget or if you're trying to, you know, somewhere in between. So uh, there's a lot of us that went to school, you know, who are actually are professional, got certified. There's some that are in between and there's people who just don't have the money uh, to buy $10,000 microphones or three thousand dollar microphones and stuff like that it's fine I'm gonna give you guys a quick tip and solution I hope this video will help so right now for today I'm using Adobe Audition it will be the same results if I was recording it in Pro Tools or Cubase or CoEdit Pro or Ableton Live or whatever that may be okay so the first thing that I'm gonna talk to you guys about that I have in my other videos that's really important um, I'm gonna show you guys how to get really good signal on low budget uh, gear and I mean it's not it's not the cheapest thing in the world and it's not the most expensive thing so first thing I'm gonna talk to you guys about if you don't have a lot of money to spend you know on three thousand dollar mics or fifteen hundred dollar mics or ten thousand dollar mics and you wanna go somewhere in between you know a hundred and fifty to, to five hundred dollar mics here I did a video on this a couple years ago for you guys. Uh, this is still my MXL 4000. I still use it, a great microphone. Um, I love it because, you know, for the clients that I work with, it produces, you know, the tone, the sound that I'm looking for, so I use it. So here's my condenser mic, very important to have. This is a large di uh, diaphragm condenser mic, very important to have. Um, the next thing, is an audio interface they range from different prices all the way from a you know hundred and fifty dollars two hundred dollars to to fifteen hundred dollars to whatever it's just a lot of them out there uh, definitely worth the money and also <clears throat> if you don't have the money to buy a preamp uh, I have a couple preamps in here but I'm not gonna show you guys well I'm not gonna talk about that today I can show you guys later but uh, here we have a PreSonus 2 pre this is also very uh, pretty important to have uh, in your signal chain if your signal from your microphone to the interface is too weak. Uh, it's just pretty much used to, to give it a boost, uh, make it louder, uh, make it more present, and that's pretty important. Okay, so <clears throat> what I did was I took an MXL 4000 and uh, I sent the signal to my M-Audio Fast Track Ultra. Uh, and I recorded three different takes. And pretty much what I did was I took one signal from the MXL 4000 to my Fast Track Ultra, recorded that signal just straight through from the, my microphone to my Fast Track Ultra and to the computer. Then I took the microphone, uh, condenser microphone, to the Fast Track Ultra, I mean to the uh, tube pre, and to my interface and to the computer. And then I took my microphone to the tube pre to my Fast Track Ultra and I added the plug-in. Uh, and I basically recorded three different takes so you guys would be able to hear the clarity difference. And, and not just so much clarity, just different things that you can do to get a recording. So the first thing that I'm going to let you guys check out is the microphone, the MXL 4000, straight to the fast track ultra straight to the computer so let's check that out <clears throat> let's make sure that I got these outputs set correctly alright so here we go mic straight into the interface so now the signal that you're hearing okay so the signal that you're hearing right now is the MXL 4000 uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone going straight into my audio interface which is my fast track ultra um, no presonus tube pre no extra plugins no any of that
there you have it. That's straight from the MXL 4000 into my Fast Track Ultra into the computer. The signal's not that bad. It's just kind of weak, but overall, it's still a good sound. It's not bad. I mean, you can add any kind of compressors or any extra additional plugins, whether it's wave plugins or uh, factory plugins inside of any program uh, to pretty much boost that, enhance it, and make it sound better. Now, these aren't cleaned up or anything, they're just straight raw. All right, so the next one that you're actually going to hear is my MXL 4000 uh, through my PreSonus 2 Pre to the Fast Track Ultra to the computer. <clears throat> What I did was I turned up the drive on it, and I'll show you guys. I turned up the drive, and I turned up the gain. Um, applied 48 phantom power, 80 hertz, and I applied the pad. Don't need to flip the polarity, obviously, because I'm not, you know, comparing or nothing's out of phase. It's just one signal. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is let you guys hear that next. Uh, this is without any extra plugins or anything on it. It's just straight raw. So check it out. Uh, also, to throw the tip out there, I did let my PreSonus 2 Pre uh, warm up for about 30 minutes to an hour. It's always good. It has a tube in there. And that tube in there needs to be warmed up in order to get a nice, warm, saturated, kind of compressed uh, tone sound, if you will. And what I did was it comes with a factory stock one that I didn't really like. Um, sounded kind of tinny, if you will. So I took it out, went to Guitar Center, bought, I think it was like $13 for a replacement, a different tube to put in there. Took it out carefully, put the new one in there, and heated it up, and it's good to go. So check it out. Okay, so right now you're hearing my vocal be passed through an MXL 4000, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, the signal is also being passed through. A PreSonus tube pre. I changed out the stock tube that comes inside of it because I didn't like it. So I went to Guitar Center and bought a $17 tube to go inside of it to replace the one that I had in there. There you go. Sounds pretty good. It's more present. Uh, as you can tell, the, the wave difference, it definitely uh, amplified it, which is not always a bad thing. Uh, but I don't have to worry about so much noise floor uh, being brought up or into my mixes. And I know I definitely got some room for my headroom. Okay, so right now you're hearing my vocal beep. So I'm not clipping or anything. That's always a good thing just in case I want to add any more um, effects into my signal chain. Uh, that definitely helps out a lot. But if you can hear the sound, it's more, it's more present. It has a little more body. Uh, I like the low end and mids. Um, it just sounds a lot more better. Uh, I mean, a lot better than what the first one did without uh, having a tube pre. So you can see it makes a big difference. So let's check it out one more time. Okay, so right now you're hearing my vocal be passed through a MXL 4000 large diaphragm. Okay, and let's check this one out. Okay, so the signal that you're hearing right now is the MXL 4000 uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. To me, uh, for my ears, person uh, with, with you know good ears, is definitely uh, a big difference to me. But I definitely could work without uh, having a PreSonus 2 Pre, and I definitely have. The majority of my core recordings that I've done in the past have been without any extra outboard gear or, or you know two Pre's and preamps and stuff like that. So definitely important to have. Now the third one that you're actually going to hear is the PreSonus 2 Pre, I mean, the MXL 4000 sent through the PreSonus 2 Pre to my actual Fast Track Ultra and to the computer with a plug-in on top of it. And that plug-in uh, that I actually have, and which one would it be? The second one. So I'm going to go into v, VST, and it should be 11. Actually, it's 1975 compressor limiters is, I think, the one that... Okay, and my setting is already in there. So the setting that I have, I made a custom uh, plug-in setting uh, for the URS. This is my custom setting. I click the Save button, save the new preset, and now I have the preset. So now you're going to hear what that signal sounds like with the actual compressor on there. So check it out. And this is additional added plug-in compressor. 
Now, this current signal that you're hearing right now is everything else except I added a 1975 URS compressor limiter plug-in on my vocals to give it more body, more warmth, more depth. Um, it's a really nice plug-in, but I still think without it, my vocals still sound good. Um, very warm, very present. And this plug-in just gives it more of that warmth. Uh, that body that I'm looking for and I thought it sounds pretty good so yeah and there you have it I, I really really do love that sound that tone that warmth um, it's it sounds more full as the clarity is there um, I really do like that plug-in on there but like I said once again you can work without it I can do that same exact thing without any ways plug-ins or anything like that uh you can always work around it with stock uh, or factory plugins that you have. Um, <clears throat> so all you people out there that are wondering, you know, is the PreSonus 2 Pre worth it? Of course, I think it's worth it. Uh, I definitely think it's worth it if you're on budget. Uh, if not, they have more additional uh, preamps. And not, I mean, this is just some of the stuff that I use. I don't have to show you guys everything, but. Pro Channel R2 preamps and other compressors and all kind of different stuff like that. I don't know if you guys can see that that well, but yeah. And I mean the MXL, the MXL 4000 uh, is not the only microphone that I use. I use all kind of different brands from AKGs to to Sterling Audios to to Neumanns to Audio Technicas. I mean you name it. I use different. Uh, in audio interfaces from M Audios to Digi Designs or Abbots and stuff like that. So it pretty much depends on what budget you're working with and exactly what you're trying to do uh, as far as your recording. Don't make recordings based off what everybody else do or how everybody else sounds. Make your recordings based off what sounds good and what fits the tone and the sound that you're going for. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to sit here. Neumann microphones sound great, amazing. But I'm not going to tell you, sit here and lie to you and tell you that every piece of high-end gear gets the job done because it doesn't. There's a lot of pieces of gear, preamps or, you know, A to D, D to A converters or anything like that uh, that just don't get the job done, uh, especially for the price that they put on them. So uh, you read a lot of reviews and stuff, you'll hear a lot of people be very uh, disappointed about that, but uh, the, we're not going to do a video about that. Um, I mean, the condenser microphones, it's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. I think it's about $200. Um, you can get it online. It's a, I mean, pros, it has a lot of clarity. Uh, I like the mids. Don't have a lot of low end, but still sounds good to my liking. Um, I think the only con about this microphone is so big and it's so heavy. Uh, that's the biggest con that I can say about it. Other than that, I love it. I've had it a couple years and I haven't got rid of it yet. So that's a good sign. Um, they have all kind of different. I know you've seen it on some of my gear, but they have all kind of different uh, audio interfaces. Uh, look online, Google it. Just check out audio interfaces. If you want any recommendations, I would just try to get anything that possibly um, can hit at least 96 uh, kilohertz or at least 192. I mean, that's that's a nice range for it. Uh, if you just want to use it to be able to interface to use to be able to play like keyboards, piano, stuff like that, then you're going to have to buy like mini cables and TRS cables and stuff like that. I know somebody asked me about that. So I would do a video on that later. Um, as far as preamps and tube pre's, like I said, preamps can get really, really, really expensive. I mean, up to like $2,500, $3,000, some even more than that. Uh, if you don't have the money to afford that kind of stuff, my biggest advice to you is to buy a preamp that's really uh I would say that that's kind of pricey. You can make a shitty mic sound great as long as you have an amazing preamp. 
it don't have to be the best in the world, but definitely don't pass uh, a ten thousand dollar mic through a I don't know a two hundred dollar preamp if they even have one or or interface or something like that. You definitely want to if you want to go big, uh, I would go big on a preamp and get you a decent mic because a preamp, a really good preamp, can make a decent mic or a shitty mic sound pretty good. So that's the route that I would go with that. Um, other than that, I mean, you guys heard it for yourself. I'll play it one more time. Uh, check out my recordings. If you want to know what I did with my recordings, I'll do a video on it later. Um, I use my Fast Track Ultra, all my microphones. Uh, I use my Pro Channel R2, my compressors. I, I do a lot of different things with my recordings. That's all I can tell you guys. I know you guys tell me that you try my tips and they really don't work well. Only thing I can tell you guys is trial and error. My stuff uh, won't work for everybody. It's not meant to work for everybody because I develop my own sound, tone, effects, plugins, and everything that I needed to do to get the sound that's good to my liking. So you guys got to do the same thing. I uh, hope this video helped. I'm going to play it one more time so you can hear the difference. And we're going to go from there. So this is just mic interface one more time. Okay, so the signal that you're hearing right now is the MXL 4000 uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone going straight into my audio interface, which is not that bad. Now, this is the microphone to pre. Okay, so right now you're hearing my vocal be passed through a MXL 4000 large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, the signal is also being passed through a pre sound is to pre. Not that bad. Definitely not that bad. Now, mic pre, uh, mic pre, then plug in. Now, this current signal that you're hearing right now is everything else except I added a 1975 URS compressor limiter plug in on my vocals to give it more body, more warmth, more depth. Um, it's a really nice plug in. So, there you have it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of talking, but I tried to be uh, informative as much as possible. Check out my other videos. Uh, I do have some old video up, you know, that got a lot of plays and views. I think almost 100,000. Uh, that was from about two years ago. But I want you guys to check out my recent stuff. Check out the music that I post. Listen to it in full HD. And subscribe, leave comments, let me know what you think. If you got any advice, um, need help with anything, just let me know, hit me up, and we can go from there. All right, thanks a lot, guys.